terminal. One of my ancestors worked for him, you know, and from what I heard, you've got a lot of his qualities. Oh, he was creative, talented, hardworking, okay. arrogant, impulsive, stubborn, <laughs> condescending. Okay. You can still see his influence all over the city. In fact, some people say you can still see his ghost walking mm. through these grounds. Oh. I believe it too. Really? This building is a knot that ties together the many strands of BC's history. It's hardly a surprise that timelines get a little tangled. Yeah, well, speaking of timelines, mine's very tight. So I'll ask again, where is Parapet? Who? The architect. Okay, I thought you were the architect. No, the famous architect. You just said you saw him. Oh, yeah, I did. Great. Where? Where indeed. Well, I'd say on the traditional territory of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, also known as the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. Now, there was a time when the Shuenwang family had their village site nearby, and in the surrounding fields they grew cannabis flowers. Before settlers came, this whole area would have been covered in beautiful purple blooms. Oh, I've seen something like that up in Mulwer, a sea of blue and white. Oh, well, the white is probably death canvas, which is not good to eat. But the blue canvas has a rich, starchy bulb that looks like an onion that tastes like a sweet potato. And they're so yummy. And, well, and the trouble is that these plants are harvested after the blooms have fallen, and the bulbs are identical. This meant that the women that cultivated the plots had to carefully remember which were healthy and which were poison. Okay, so parapets in a cannabis field nearby? Or? Well, no. The Shuenwang family was moved from here so that the first government buildings could be built back in 1859, and their descendants were in case for its use until 2007. But pagans or no, there are deep roots here, and always will be. Hey, you should research the roots where you'll be building. Honor them in your designs, even. I'll think about it. You should. To build something new, you need a solid foundation. Okay, bye. Well, I'm not going to be building anything if I don't find the professor, so... Oh, haven't I told you already? Nope. You'll find who you're looking for by the bird cages. The original government buildings on this site, they're really, um... Uh, interesting? Architecturally? I have a photo of them. I'll just show you. Oh, that's okay. Just tell us how to get to these bird cages. Oh, well, the last one burned down in 1957. How can Professor Parapet be in a building that burned down in 1957? Okay, no need to get upset. The foundations of one of the bird cages eventually became a part of the Premier's Rose Garden, which is where I saw your architect just a few minutes ago. They also have an interesting history. Really oh, starting to have a history lesson. Oh, I'll put down that photo. Be sure to compare it with the foundations that you see there. Okay, if I take this and we all promise to look at it, will you tell us where to go? It's around the corner of the building, sunk into the ground. Finally, the information I was looking for. All right, everyone, to the Premier's Rose Garden. Welcome. Going to time travel. My, what a muscular bunch you are. You, my friend, you are especially strapping, I can see. Well done, you. Now, there is a lot of stone for us to cut and haul for the construction of our brand new parliament building, but I'm here. <laughs> I assure you, the new building will be magnificent, or my name is not. Fr Wait, you're Francis Moss and Rathenberg? Well, yes, obviously. Ah, you must be my new assistant, Charlie Crockett. I, you know, I was expecting you about half an hour ago. Uh, no, my name's Taylor Transom. I'm an architect myself, actually. Oh, you're an architect as well. What a coincidence. Who sent you? <laughs> oh, it was Bowen Martin, wasn't it? The Lands and Works Commissioner. You know that man has held it out for me from the start. Nobody sent me. I'm working on a project of my own, and I've tried to find my mentor, but I can't Oh, find I understand. You've come searching for the closest architectural genius. Yes, I will gladly take you under my wing. This is it possible. How old are you? I know I hardly seem a day over 25, don't I? That is because I am, in fact, only 25 years old. But I must ask you to trust me. Worry not, my plans have never failed. It's true they've also never been built before. But nevertheless, now, where is my assistant? Okay, uh, I'm starting to think our timelines might have gotten a little tangled, just like Gable was warning. Let's find out. Uh, Mr. Rattenbury? Yes? What year is it? 
What year is it? What an odd question. Well, this is the same year today as it was yesterday, you know, 1893. Speaking of the year, I know it is very strange to consider because last year I was merely an apprentice at my uncle's architectural firm, and now Francis Rattenberry has already begun his first solo project. Uh -huh. Wait, so they're going to let you build the Parliament buildings with no experience? Well, excuse me, I thought you were coming to me for help with your little... Uh, it's a city hall, actually, in Bulwark. Oh, that's odd. They didn't ever ask me to design their city hall. Because I'm designing No, it. I mean, it's odd they didn't ask me to design it first. But, whatever the case may be, whenever you are stuck with a design, the first thing that you must consider is form. Now, form is the artistic component of the building, the decorative elements, you know, the harmony of its composition. Form is how a building conveys its meaning, because that is the most important question to ask. What does a building mean? Uh, not as important a question as what the building does. Who in the world are you? I'm Charlie Crockett, mister. I'm your new assistant. Oh, well, um, I thought you would be, uh... What? A bit older. I'm only five years younger than you, mister, and I can already tell you need my help. Yes, well... Dreamers like you need an ordinary person like me to remind you of the most essential part of any construction project. <laughs> it's oh. function. What's the purpose of a building and how do you build it to achieve that purpose? Well, yes, well... well. That's very charming. I imagine that is the case for an ordinary person. But for an architect like you and me, an artist, surely the most important part is the building's form. Function. No, it's form. Function. Form. Function. Well, my new best friend, uh, <laughs> Transit, will back me up. Go on, Transit. Uh, transom, actually. Taylor Transom. Right? Yes, that's what I said, Transport. Now go and correct this child for well, me. When uh, I'm... Actually, I'm working on a project of my own. I could use some perspective on both form and function. Well, go on. Show us your drawings. Yes. Let's see. Oh, great heavens! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks like a snail. It does not. Well, I'm afraid it does, treetop. But chin up. I, it's hardly the worst designed government building I've ever seen. Yeah, that honor would have to go to these here bird cages. Yes. Sorry, what bird cages? Oh, my apologies. They're not actual bird cages. Ha ha. They're these ugly little structures here. All I see is a garden surrounded by stones that kind of look like the foundations of an old building. Okay, well, uh, that's troubling, my friend. Are you feeling quite all right? Oh, hold on a minute. Is this what you're talking about? Oh. Oh, what an excellent photograph you have there, Triscuit. Um, you there, sir, yes, you. Come right up here. Would you hold up this photograph so that all your stonemason friends could see it? Pretty please. Hold it nice and high. Be careful. It's very heavy. I know it doesn't look it. Looks like an ordinary piece of paper, but trust me. Perfect. Nice and high, yes. Just show it to everybody. Perfect. Look, you're holding like the, like it's nothing. There you are. Perfect. Now, if you squint very carefully, you can see that uh, the design of this building so somewhat resembles uh, a fancy Victorian birdcage, which is from where the nickname was derived. And like an actual birdcage, these buildings are cramped and restrictive. There's hardly enough room in there for all of the MLAs, let alone their offices, so they're a failure of function. Okay, yes. got it. Don't make my government buildings cramped and inconvenient. No, 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 you don't got it. These buildings are a failure of form as well. The, the legislative hall should be by, of, and for the people of British Columbia. But look at this place. Doesn't it look like it's been pulled out of a carnival? It's not likely to instill anyone with confidence, let alone the people who are meant to be represented here. And worse still, the legislative chamber itself has been shoved away in a forgotten corner of the property. Whereas in my new design, the legislative chamber will be in the heart of the building because it is the heart of... Democracy! Well, you'll learn. That's the important part. So, your snail design, you must think about the message that it will send to the people that use it. Expect... Delays. Yes. Is that what you want your government building to say? Well, actually, I think I have a better idea. What if we put the debating hall at the center and then have hallways radiating out from it like a sun with beams? And then for function, we could put offices along those hallways so it's easier to get back and forth. Yes, I think you're starting to got it. Oh, goodness heaven. Well, I'm so sorry. I forgot I placed you here. Ah, uh, why don't you give that to me and return it to your friends? Let's give our stonemason a round of applause. Well done, sir. Well done indeed. You're receiving another nickel in your paycheck this month. That is for sure. Now, come along, all you stonemasons. I'm going to show you where we're going to be laying the foundation. Oh, uh, you go on ahead, Mr. Rattenbury. All of us will catch up with you in a moment. I'll just, um, 
I'll just fill out some of their paperwork for you. Crockett. Yeah? That is a wonderful idea. I will see you lot over there. Good day, Triangle. <laughs> uh, okay, he's gone. Now, Mr. Rattenbury seems a bit high strung. <laughs> so, what strung? I, rats is practically a harp. Rats? That's a great nickname. Let's use that. Okay, I was thinking it would be hilarious if we snuck up on rats and gave him a bit of a surprise. Let's sneak up nice and quiet and then shout as loud as we can Good day, rats. Okay? Let's practice now, but just on the count of three in a whisper, so we don't tip him off. Good day, rats. Excellent, everyone. All right, follow me. We'll hide behind this building for a minute, and then when we come out the other side, we're going to have to sneak. Why not just make one building? Well, that's what Mr. Rattenbury's plan is. Right. This is a beautiful rose garden. It's more than just being quiet. It's also the style. Oh. Do you want some style? Go the rest of your body as much as possible. Isn't this drawing more attention to me? <laughs> well, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. Oh. Stay calm. We're going to sneak this way. And then you see all of that uncut stone over there? It kind of looks like a staircase. That's you can all sit there. Good day! Yeah. Oh, are you serious, Crockett? <laughs> now? Are you something wrong? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, Mr. Bohan Martin of the Department of Lands and Works has decided that we are not to use marble columns in the building after all. Now! In 1895, two years into the project! Just a second ago, it was 1893. Time sure flies, eh? Crockett, take down a letter. Mr. Martin. The marble is so serious a matter, and its omission will be such an injury to the building that I trust you will re at least, you know, reevaluate before coming to an irreversible decision. The legislative hall is the most important part of the interior of the building. It is the leading motif of the design. The grandeur of the entire scheme would be absolutely ruined if the culminating feature, the legislative hall, were poor and commonplace, and it will be so, sir, if this marble is omitted. Are you keeping up? I speak strongly because I feel strongly in this matter. Need I remind you, sir, that as architects of these parliament buildings, pardon me for reminding you, but the design of all work that passes into the building must pass through my hands so long as I am in charge, and should it be Sir, that my professional advice and recommendations are not worthy of your confidence, then believe me, much as it would pain me to sever my connection with these Parliament buildings, I should have no choice but to resign my position. Hold on a second. Ah, train whistle. Good day. You can't just quit. Not after you've done all this work. Oh, I agree, Rats. Can't you just use something else, like, I don't know, concrete? Yes, I should just use something else. You're right, I'm being silly. No, of course not! Can't use something else. You simply do not understand what I'm doing with my design style. <laughs> Mr. Martin certainly doesn't, but anybody with half a brain could understand. You two are hopeless. Stonemasons, you're an intelligent bunch. Surely you will understand what I'm doing with my design. I have used four main styles of architecture in my building. Firstly, we have the thick, rough walls of the Romanesque style to bring a sense of permanence and reliability. Then, the domes on the roof are in the Italian Renaissance style, for a bit of flair. And behind you here, we have the elaborate, ornate Baroque style, to give a sense of power and royalty. Now, if it ain't Baroque, don't fix it! In the style of ancient Greece and Rome. Now, these were some of the earliest democracies in Europe. In fact, the very word, democracy comes from ancient Greece. That is why the marble columns are so important. If you go to the ancient buildings in Greece and you look at them, what do you see? Marble columns. Yes, and if you go to the ancient buildings in Rome and you look at them, what do you find? Marble columns. Yes, so what do we need here in this building? Everybody nice and loud so Bohan Martin can hear you. Marble, marble columns. columns. Yes, well done. You don't have to quit over this. I was going to come Crockett's new letter. Absolutely right. Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin. 
I have endeavored to place into the executive council room some samples of the marble which I've received, and ooh, so beautiful are they in and of themselves that I trust you will at least examine them before coming to an irreversible decision. I will meet you there presently. Well done. Yes, just make sure those samples of marble get there first, Crockett, a gift for me. Thank you. Now go, oh. like the wind, oh, no. like, a, like a locomotive, yes. like a, 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 a third thing that's fast. Can I ask you something? Yes, of course, Triscuit Echophobia. Earlier you said something about wanting this building to be of and for British Columbians. And I understand the four design styles, you know, the Romanesque, the Renaissance, the classical, the Baroque, and how they all mean something, but they're all European. There's nothing in the design that's from here. No, 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 that is where you're wrong. For while the architectural elements are European, the building's materials are all local. You see, the foundation is made of granite from Nelson Island, and the facade of the building is made of andesite from Haddington Island, and even the slate and the copper on the roof, it's all local. But is that enough? What about making the building feel connected to the history of the place, you know, to the roots? Then uh, what about you in your city hall? How are you going to incorporate the, the roots there, as you say? Well, the construction site is surrounded by beautiful cedar trees, just enormous. Maybe I can incorporate cedar wood into the design, like, like carved cedar columns out front. Uh, it's not so different from a Greek colonnade. Well, maybe. I have to consult the local First Nations, see how they use cedar. I want it to feel in harmony with the original use of the land. What in the world do you mean? at the moment is getting Crockett back for surprising me earlier. So this is what we'll do. We'll get up from here, sneak around the corner, come up behind Crockett, and then we'll bellow like bulls. Good day, Crockett. Is that good? Do we need to practice? No, of course we don't. We're very smart. So follow me. <laughs> ah, these were the doors that Crockett was trying to get through. When those of them and put them up around the new library building. These are them? Aren't they, I don't know, a little safe? Well, what does that mean? I mean, are there any women in the No. Well, there's not. Well, I, you know, the muses on the roof will be women. You know that's not the same. Oh, what are you, a suffragette all of a sudden? <laughs> and they're all white, I assume? I'm sure they be James Douglas was part black. Oh, really? Yep, born in Guyana to a Scottish father and a mother from Barbados. Hmm, I didn't know that. But what about indigenous people? You said you would think about incorporating their history. Isn't this a good opportunity? Oh, look, I don't know 
what you want from me, all right? I'm not a historian. It's Olaf Ethel Scoliosis. Whatever his name is, he's the historian, not me. But you can make change here. The people who work here listen to you. What gave you that impression? Well, more than they listen to indigenous people. Look, I'm a builder. That is all I know how to do. I don't know how to run a business or how to run a family or decide whose side of history gets to go up on the walls. I'm not interested in that. I just need to finish this library and I need it to be perfect. You don't have to get upset. Well, I apologize! Crap! <laughs> well, really sorry, it's just... Don't tell anyone this, but he's going through a bit of a rough time right now. You see, a few years ago, a millionaire by the name of Charles Melville Hayes hired Rat to design a few hotels up north. Now, Rat poured his whole heart into those designs, like the best he ever did. And then, a few months ago, Hayes boards a cruise liner to return to Canada from England. The safest to ever sail the seas. I will give you one guess as to what ship it was. Anyone? It was the Titanic. Uh, now Rats doesn't think he'll ever get the chance to finish those buildings. That and the, this has to say between you and me that he's having trouble at home as well. He doesn't get along well with his wife or his kids. He's supposed to take them on an around-the-world cruise, but, you know, with everything that happened. Exactly. Rats even volunteered to join up, but they turned him away. They said he was too old, so he's gotten a bit more cautious, not quite so carefree. Well, this building is supposed to represent every person in British Columbia. If it doesn't show BC's full history... Well, I'll see what I can do. He does listen. <laughs> Sometimes. In the meantime, let's just try to cheer him up a little bit. You all know the drill by now, right? Three, two, one, good day, rats. Let's get that sad, tired heart a boost. Good day, rats! Yes. <laughs> goodbye, everyone. Wait, goodbye? Yes, I'm afraid so, toilet. <laughs> I must say goodbye to you and this city and this province. I must sail home to England forever. Why? What did you do? Well, my only crime was that I loved a beautiful woman. Of course, the woman wasn't my wife, hence the divorce in 1928. And now it is 1930, and, well, we have reached the end. But do not mourn for me. Why not? because I have my alma, that's why. Uh, she is a piano player at the Empress Hotel, another one of my notable Victoria creations, and you should visit if you have any taste. Uh, the first time I ever heard her play, I knew we were destined to be together. You know, she is an artist, as am I. We understand each other. I mean, it's true, she is, um, well, she is 30 years my junior, but, quiet you, she'd already been married twice by the time I came along, so, you know, third time's the charm. And she actually won a medal for her service in the ambulance corps during the war. Just like Crockett here. <laughs> Who I shall miss dearly. Who's going to remind me of the importance of function now, eh? Well, let me shake your hand, Rats. Oh, no, your leg. Crockett, don't be proud. Here. Have my cane. Something to remember me by. Now, as for you, young builder, now that my shining light will be gone, the future of British Columbian architecture will lie in your probably capable hands. So, learn from my example. I was an arrogant braggart, and, well, look where it got me. So, listen to others. Be a little bit more humble, and you will do well. Not as well as me, of course, but, you know, well enough. So... Goodbye, Taylor Transom. You remembered my name? Yes, of course I did. Crockett, don't cry. I'm not crying yet. Cry. If you cry, Crockett, I'll cry. It'll be a big mess. My eyes might just start sweating a little bit. That's a medical years. condition and you should get it looked after. But listen, <laughs> my Alma wrote me a song for when I'm feeling low to remind me of why it is I do any of this. Well, can you sing it for me right now? Thought you'd never ask. I am far across the waters, but I hear you calling me. In my dreams your eyes are shining, dark as marine. I shall come to claim you someday. I shall kiss your lips and love you, dark as marine. Goodbye, legislature.
inside. They won't be done until the 80s, and I don't know. Is it enough to fix what's broken? What about in your time? Has the poison of the past sunk too deep to remove? Well, it depends who you ask, but uh, mm -hmm. I think when you're working with memory, you need to decide what's worth digging up and what should stay in the ground, like campus. And if you ask me, we need our democracy as much as ever. And it deserves a house for the future, so... What are you going to build? Okay, well this is just the beginning of an idea and I'll have to consult with the local First Nations, make sure I'm using their traditions correctly. Listen, like Rath said I should, but I'm starting to see something. The Bulwer City Hall is a big building with lots of room to grow. It'll have carved cedar house posts out front so that the light can shine in and a grand entrance that will make everyone feel welcome. And then, in the field around it, we could grow canvas. A beautiful marriage of form and function. A house for democracy. Well, thanks. Ooh. I couldn't have done it without you or Mr. Rothbury. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes I think I can still see him on these grounds. Good day, yes! everyone. <laughs> Good day, rats. You're alive? Oh, no, I'm extremely dead. Oh, but I would love to tell you the story of how I came to be so. You see, after we returned home to England, my second wife, Alma, became a very popular composer. And so she hired a young man by the name of George Stoner to be her chauffeur. And George was many things. He was young and handsome and young and vital. And did I mention he was young? And so the inevitable happened. The two of them fell in love. And Alma moved him into our home and pampered him with gifts. And then one night in March of 1935, either George or Alma bludgeoned me to death with a mallet. Oh. Yes, we weren't expecting that one, were we? <laughs> well, neither was I, but I suppose it was a fittingly dramatic end to a very dramatic life. And now that the life is over, I've returned to Victoria, the city that truly appreciated me. And I realize this is my last opportunity to speak to you wonderful stonemasons and see if you have any questions for me. All right, friends, well, you're free to go, but we'll stay here for a moment. If you have any questions for Mr. Ratbury or Crockett or myself, or if you want to take a picture with us, uh, you do still show up in photos, don't you? Yeah. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Anything else, Transom? Well, before we wrap up, one last time. Oh, all right. Three, two, two one. one. Good day, everyone! Good day.